While there isn't exactly a roadmap to becoming a minimalist, it still is quite an exciting thing to look forward to. In the early stages and far into my minimalist journey, there were a few mistakes that I found myself running into, and I wanted to share those mistakes in a video. But first, if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. Here we talk about minimalism and things of that nature, so if that sounds good to you and you end up liking the video, be sure to like and consider subscribing. Let's get started. I'm just going to go over a few things that I wish I had been more conscious of when becoming a minimalist because they would have saved me a lot of headache and misdirection. And the first mistake was not having a plan. Planning is an important part of anything, and it's no different for taking on a minimalist journey. Not having a goal of what I wanted my version of minimalism to look like sort of had me searching for answers through decluttering, even when I didn't really need to. Whether it was to have a certain amount of money saved, or just declutter 30 things out of my room, or at least having a loose plan may have helped me find my balance a little bit more quickly. I'll call you back and film a video. No, but now I did. Yeah, the ice drink. For me personally, the most important question to ask was why? Why do I want to be a minimalist and what about that lifestyle attracts me? Asking myself helped guide my decisions and identify the things worth keeping in my life. The second mistake I made was one last shop. And I'm guilty of this more than once. The one last shop mistake is the idea of decluttering everything I own and shopping one more time and swearing to not shop ever again. Thinking that this would be the absolute last time I would buy some of these things for quite a while. And this was an easy trap for me to fall into because I've gone through the phase many times of hating all my clothes. I figured that I would donate all my shirts and then buy all new shirts. Then one would end up faded, one would end up ripped, and another one would just be completely lost. I quickly realized this wasn't a realistic way to declutter, and I ended up spending more money than I would have if I just kept some of what I already had. Becoming a minimalist didn't mean I need to throw away all my clothes and buy a pack of all black shirts, and it didn't mean I need to throw away all my coffee mugs and only keep plain white mugs. Instead of thinking about what I can buy to appear as a minimalist, I just considered what I can do to live more intentionally, and decided that's how I'm going to utilize minimalism. And the next mistake I made was copying how other people were doing it. And I say this lightly because I don't exactly want to send the wrong message. Because there are many, many different extremes of minimalism. I always found myself subconsciously copying whichever channel I was most interested in at that time. I think drawing inspiration from how others do minimalism is great, if it makes sense for you. Going into this lifestyle with an open mind really is the way to get the most out of it. I personally think it would be awesome to meet someone who has a huge collection of something and a very colorful wardrobe and considers himself a minimalist. It really doesn't have to be a cookie cutter schematic of pour over coffee, plain white t-shirts, and plain coffee mugs. I strongly believe in taking everyone's advice with a grain of salt and utilizing it in a way that works best for you. And that includes everything that I tell you in my videos. And the next mistake I made was pushing minimalism on others. And unfortunately, I feel like this is the reason a lot of minimalists are disliked. I would never want someone to feel bad for owning a lot more than me or feeling like the way that they're living is the wrong way of living. A question I often get asked is, does seeing a lot of clutter bother you? And the answer is absolutely not. I can never imagine being bothered by someone else owning more than me and especially judging someone for owning more than me or living differently than me. I'm not one who has a lot of possessions, but that doesn't make me better than anyone else. And that definitely doesn't mean I think that everyone else is a materialistic snob. Just because I made the choice to adopt minimalism into my life doesn't mean that I should sell it as the magic answer to everyone's problem. I just want to live my life as a minimalist, and that's good enough for me. And the last mistake I made was focusing only on the physical aspect. After I went through all my belongings and decluttered everything that I deemed unnecessary, I felt the benefits very quickly. The benefits of a clearer mind and negative space.
It felt great to only own the essential, but it still felt like there was more that I needed to do. It wasn't long before I decided to be more exclusive with my time, the same way I was with my physical items. I really try my best to not say yes to everything and not overindulge in, well, anything, really. I became a minimalist because I don't want to just be someone who owns less. I want to be someone who has a clear mind and does less. I can confidently say that in my opinion, this is one of the most important things of becoming a minimalist. Focusing on the things outside of physical clutter. Speaking for myself, of course. Slowing down and taking my time, which isn't so easy in today's world. Anyways, I just wanted to share these points to hopefully help someone out there who is thinking about becoming a minimalist avoid these early, early mistakes that I did. Everyone's going to run into their own problems and has to deal with them uniquely, but hopefully at least one person out there found some value out of these. As always, I hope you got some value out of this video and I appreciate the time you spent here watching. If you did like this video and you do like this type of content, be sure to like and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thank you.